Hi, my name is Amber Siebler and I am a graduate student at Stony Brook University. I'm here at the Smithsonian studying the effects of ocean acidification and temperature rise on the boring rates of sponges. So basically my project entails an aquarium experiment where I'm increasing the temperature and also lowering the pH using a CO2 bubbling system. And then I either attach or don't attach sponges to corals to see whether or not the sponges erode the corals faster in an ocean acidification environment or a temperature difference. So we're headed to Isla Pastores now to go collect our sponges for the experiment. Uh, we'll be using Clyona variens, which is a boring sponge, and for the coral we'll be using Montastria faviolata as well as Corites corites. I'm collecting Clyona variants right now from the shallow Porites reef at Isla Pastores. And I chose Clyona variants as the boring sponge to use in my experiment because it grows in this thick encrusted mat here in Boca del Toro. So it's very easily manipulated so that you can attach this sponge to the coral pieces that I wanted to look at and to uh, determine the rate of bioerosion of this sponge on those pieces of coral. Now I took this same sponge um, that you're seeing here in the video back to the lab and cut it up into smaller pieces uh, to form explants that were roughly two or three centimeters squared. And each of these pieces was placed in the wet lab seat uh, flow through system table so that it could recover and begin the healing process of, after being cut up uh, before being placed into the experimental tanks. I took the coral species, Parietes parietes and Montastria faviolata, and fractioned those into smaller pieces that would be able to be similarly sized as the sponge species that we would be using for the experimental setup. Each of the coral pieces was then weighed using the buoyant weight technique, which is a great technique um, if you want to weigh something that you don't want to expose to air, you can actually weigh it directly in the water and it'll give you an estimate of the weight of the calcium carbonate structure of that piece. Uh, the sponge pieces were then attached to half of the Parides species and half of the Montastria species so that whenever we place them into each of the treatments, we would have a coral control without any sponges attached and a coral experimental unit with sponges attached. There were three levels of CO2 enrichment used in this experiment. Ambient, which reflected the naturally occurring pH and CO2 of the region. Moderate and high CO2 levels, which represented the projected mid and end of century levels, respectively, of pH and CO2 in our coastal ecosystems. This enrichment was achieved by bubbling CO2 into reservoir tanks, seen here in blue, and using a pH controller to maintain the desired pH levels. This experiment was run for approximately two months before the final weights were taken from all of the coral fragments to see how much erosion occurred as a result of the acidification and sponge erosion. Additionally, I used molecular techniques to look at the microbial communities in the different sponges to see if the pH or temperature had any sort of effect on the microbial communities in the sponges.